Hello and welcome to part two of this three part video where we look at the Burndett B470 fire and police radio. This police uh, and fire radio was very uh, popular in the uh, 80s, started off in the early 80s all the way through to the 90s there, used by UK police and, and fire brigades mainly and uh, in the apprehension of criminals driving fast down the road like this guy. <laughs> and uh, if you haven't seen the first video please uh, pop back and watch that so this one makes a little bit more sense. Uh, we left it at this point here where I'd got to the point of designing the radio in uh, in 3D in Design Spark, the, just the case really. So now I moved on to the internals. Um, this is the uh, the what I intend to make for the innards of the radio, the bit that you don't really see, but takes all the work. So we took out the uh, potentiometer from the Zastone V77 board there, which is the on-off switch and the volume control, and put that in the place that it is on the original radio on the side there. Uh, quite a tight fit. Um, in fact, this turned out to be quite a, a jam actually. Uh, I made a, um, a channel selector switch there, printed that all in one piece. That's the beauty of uh, 3D printing. There, you can uh, you can print uh, pieces like that all in one, which move. Just a little bit of scraping out of the insides of it, and uh, away we went. So that was nice. And and. Draw, um, building it all to scan all in the same plane here it makes it very uh, easy to ensure that things fit and stuff and um, I bought some uh, little lever micro switches off of eBay which are very cheap the whole point of doing this was to do it on the cheap I didn't want to spend lots of money uh, in making this prototype so anyway I came up with a design this took lots of work as you can probably imagine and uh, I came up with this simple design of, a, of an off of like a little cam there to operate the switch for the channel select um, I'm only going with just the single channel uh, down uh, selection, not the up selection, just to avoid having to put two switches in because it, it cycles round. Um, a couple of little things I did here was where we put bolts and nuts through the side of the frame, uh, I decided to put little boxes on there to keep the nut captive. Now this was a real pain when it came to cleaning up the print afterwards. Uh, it took me a very long time to clean this up, but um, still it was worth it just to stop the nuts from falling out when we actually uh, disassembled the, the unit a bit later on. So you have to think of things like that anyway. So PTT placement, I, I brought it obviously into the original position, which is right in the center of the radio, as you can see on the old radio there. So I wanted to keep this radio this uh, to be um, not an exact replica, that would be, be silly and quite hard to do, uh, but I wanted it to, to pay homage to the original radio to the point where at a glance you, you, know, you wouldn't really know the difference between the two radios, they would look very very similar. Um, so with this I, I uh, made a basic PTT switch, I'm going to get some yellow PLA so I can actually get this to look uh, uh, similar in that respect, but at the moment most of this is all being prototyped in silver. Right, we did the um, the volume control knob as well. Uh, I, I made that slightly fatter than the original one just to accommodate the shaft a little bit better there. And for microphone placement, I put this turret at the top of the unit there uh, so we could pop the condenser mic off of the main uh, V77 board here as it on, just sits on the underside and solder some leads to it and then run the wires down to the PCB. I mean, basically, we're just taking all the V77 controls off and uh, putting them on little thin wires and, and running them to the external parts of the radio where required. So we've got volume on off, um, the channel select, and the microphone, and the PTT. So we've got all those controls. We're breaking off the V77 board and putting externally around the radio. We're putting some supports there for the PCB and the battery. Um, having printed this I am actually going to change this design slightly um, it's like anything this is a prototype the first one I'm doing so there will be quite a bit that will change from this one as we go down the line but uh, I mean that's in essence what why you do prototype isn't it so you can actually find out faults in things and fix them I toyed around with various uh, options for the battery and came up with uh, this cell here uh, which fitted perfectly and gave me enough of a, of a, um, a capacity for what I would use this, use this radio for. The speaker was an issue. I did want to fit the speaker initially in the top section of the radio, but it was just too big, the stock speaker, and I don't really want to go buying small speakers. Again, like I said, I, I wanted to do this on a budget, keep it nice and cheap. So for now on the prototype, the speaker's going inside the case, and we'll, we'll see how that um, sounds and operates when we finally fin print the final case and wrap it around the, the unit there. I mean, if I have to drill a few holes in the front so be it you know like I said it's not an, ex an exact replica but it's a very very close replica to the original and so uh, you know there are going to be design cues and design changes to it 
um, and those with a keen eye will notice I put an extra couple of bars in the top grill there you see just little things you might not even notice it but I know they're there <laughs> anyway here are the the pair of radios that I've got which are in fantastic nick I have to say these really are good and some people might say why are you bothering doing this well because it's good fun and it's really teaching me a lot about uh, about the 3d design side now these were the um, channel selection buttons which I had to remove off of the board uh, on the Zasto V77 board and then I popped off the PTT board as well and I just worked out just by um, belling them with the meter uh, which buttons were which for up and down and I got the basic design of the plate onto the 3D printer now this took quite a while I printed it at um, 0.12 resolution layer height uh, and it took over seven hours to print this so there's lots of support in there as you can see because there was overhangs and underhangs and um, so a lot of the time you're just printing the support material which took me an age to get off it took me best part of an hour to clean this up afterwards but it was worth it because it's really come out really really nice and I'm really really pleased with it first print uh, job done so but like I say there are a few things I do want to change about it uh, you can see seven hours 57 minutes uh, there are a few things I do want to change in which I will change on the final uh, version of this but uh, this prototype is looking pretty close so as you can see I've already mounted the potentiometer in the side there and just checked some of the through holes for the bolts and uh, it's all looking pretty pretty smart now I managed to get the recess for the brass nut on the potentiometer which has gone nicely into the case so I'm pleased about that and the PTT mechanism worked very very well I was uh, very surprised uh, with the accuracy of this printer it's very good indeed and the selection switch, the knob, even with the little fine, uh, the fine um, knurls on the knob, I've got the little grid lines on there. So I'm pleased that they've printed as well. Um, the this mechanism, I think um, it's okay. It works. It's functional. I think I could probably do better with that, uh, given a, a little bit more thought. But it does actually work. And um, like I say, it just gives you the, the channel down, but it cycles around. So when you get down to channel 16, it goes back round to one. So the original uh, radio only had three channels, of course. So volume on off switch, that works nicely there. Like I say, these little features, if I was doing I could probably get those machined by a friend who's got a CNC machine. So I could get those done in aluminium, which would definitely make it look a bit smarter. Um, again, the top mounted PTT lever switch, these were 199 for five delivered from eBay. You see how cheap you can do this? Same with the nuts and bolts I've used here, box, you know, a huge box of those for like 599 the cap head. So, you know, you don't have to spend silly money. Um, you can uh, do these things on a budget and the 3D printer that I'm using here only costs 200 pounds as well. So it's not like you need a huge amount of money. You just need time and you need a little bit of skill. <laughs> so there's the, uh, there's the condenser mic just popped in the top now I didn't allow enough uh, enough space around that as you can see so uh, there's a few things that I've got to tweak uh, when I uh, do the, the version 2 of this at some point but for now this is this is fine so I've got it all lashed up 11, and we'll have a listen 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 1, 2, 1, 2 one, two, three, one, two. You can see the green received light. One, two. So I was pleased about that. All the functions work correctly. Um, and I've got the just the battery to wire in there. So I'm very, very pleased overall with how this has come out. And um, like I say, I, I, it's with the cam switch, I think that does need a little bit more attention. But again, that's something I can, I can play with. But for the rest of it, for the most part, I'm very, very pleased. Very, very pleased with how it's come out. So... I got uh, the. Uh, I've already got some of these uh, JST connectors in my drawer anyway, so I wanted to be able to disconnect the battery because again, I'm not sure it, when you charge through USB if the battery, the original battery in the V77, has protection. There's the um, the old board next to the new board. I think they did a really good job in condensing that stuff on the old board, considering that's 30 years old. Anyway, so this is the the sort of final layout with it sort of tidied up a bit with the battery uh, 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 cable tied there to one of the supports 
and uh, yeah it's, it's all nice and solid it's not going anywhere a little bit of hot glue around the speaker just to, to keep it uh, in place there and um, that's it really um, for a first sort of shot prototype I'm very very happy with this and um, like I say the the nice thing with the working prototype is you, you can just use that to tweak the design and I've already gone back and actually changed the original design now and accommodated a lot of these changes before I forget about them so it's always worth doing that so yeah really really chuffed with that come out really really well and uh, yeah it's uh, the next part of the process is gonna take a little while because that's the case and getting that tweaked is gonna and getting it looking good is gonna be a trick so I wanted to check the battery voltage now as it came delivered the battery is at 3.8 volts which is its storage voltage which is fine so I wanted to check to see to check the radio was managing the charge of the battery and, and that the original V77 battery didn't have a, a battery management board in so it was pulling half an amp when plugged into the USB and I checked with the meter just to see uh, to make sure there was no excessive volts going across the battery and there wasn't it seemed to be charging at 3.8 volts there so I was quite happy with that and I could see there was a current draw of half an amp so I checked it a little bit later on uh, and uh, kept an eye on it. I didn't want to obviously overcharge this side in case there was no no management in there And you can see on the underside of the board there actually internally There's a, actually a red light on when it's charging. I'm pretty sure on the V77 you can't see that externally um, But obviously this board is used in other radios I'd imagine So anyway after a little while the charge current had dropped down to 0.8 and it was at 4.2 volts Which is the terminal voltage on lithium polymer and uh, and then it actually had cut out then it was supplying no more current and I could see by looking at the actual board that the red light had gone out so we knew that the, the actual board is controlling the charge so there you go uh, if you have been thanks ever so much for watching uh, and and there might be a couple of weeks until the next episode but um, uh, because I've got a busy time at work coming up but um, we should get this finished within the next uh, two weeks so if you have been thanks ever so much for watching keep an eye out on the channel for the next episode and we'll catch you on the next one stay safe